Hey, Jamie. Been looking for you for now on two hours. Where the deuce have you been, anyhow? Riding. Jamie, look. You left here without doing all your chores. The wood box was half empty. The chickens hadn't been fed. And I'm saying, piping mad at you. Now, look, Jamie, we don't mind you riding off and doing whatever's on your mind, but we'd just like to know where you're at. Don't you understand that? I get them done. Yeah, but not on time. Look, I get them done my way. Does it have to be yours? Jamie. Jamie. You can talk to me. What? What's the matter, son? What's on your mind? What's wrong? Ain't nothing wrong with me. Do to your leg. Here, let me see. Ooh. We'll have to do something about that. You're pretty tame. How about us being friends? I could sure use a friend. that leg. Come on. Maybe that crow's all he needed, huh? Virginia City leads off there. Think you can make it all right? Made it here, didn't I? Just let me water my mule, clean off my face, and I'll be on my way. Thank you for your help. There's a pump. Some spread. That sure is. <laughs> Found him at the bottom of a dry wash. Had himself a fall. He's bruised up some, nothing's broke. <laughs> He's got too much sass in him to hurt. Yeah, give him a good rub down. Howdy. I'd say you're the boss around here. That uh, hand of yours need doctrine? Sprain, but I'm still in one piece. Wouldn't take it amiss if you used to tell me to rest a spell and have some grub. Well, uh, why don't you rest a spell and have some grub? Stay the night if you like, too. Enforce myself. Name's John. Honest John, but I answered other two. Ben Cartwright. If you got any one-handed work needs doing, I'll be glad to pay him away. No, no need for that. Figure you'd say that. I just want to make a good impression. Or if I put my friend here in your corral there, so you make yourself at home. Obliged. Now you mind your manners. I want you to make a good impression, too. My, how some folks do live. Think we found what we're looking for? Hmm? You was dead. Well, how'd you get yourself in there? You ain't got the sense to lower give a lizard. I thought that fox had you for sure. Got your leg, didn't he? Let me look at it here. Now hold still, you devil. 
Well, you had pretty good doctrine. Better than I have. You've been eating well, too. <laughs> oh, John, you're glad to see you. I'll be dang. Hey, mister, who told you to let that bird out of his cage? Didn't have to be told. Well, you just put him back. No, sir, it's my bird. <laughs> he's not your bird, he's my bird. Now give him to me. Give him to me. <laughs> now look what you did. You done it yourself with all your yelling and jumping around. Well, you let him out of his cage. You had no right to just walk into somebody's barn and get his cage and open now, it. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, Jamie. Hold it. We'll get him back. Let's see what's what. I'll tell you what's what. That bird was scared away from me two days ago by a fox. So I got his leg hurt. I don't believe that. Anybody could come here and say that that bird's his. Can you prove that, mister? If you can, try calling him. See who he comes to. Well, that sounds fair enough. Jamie? Go ahead, you get the first crack. If he comes in, the bird belongs to Jamie, huh? Come on, Blackie. Come on, Blackie. Come on. Cookies, Blackie, cookies. Come on, Blackie. Come on. Please, Blackie, come on. Come on. Well, it ain't fair. I mean, I haven't had time to teach him that yet. Don't need no teaching. Who's fair? Black devil. You come on down here before I pull your hair out. Put a lot of store in the bird. I'd, uh, I'd pay dang near any price for him. I put store in him too. He ain't for sale. Now I've been invited to stay for supper and a night. All right, if I store my gear in there. Yeah, you're welcome to the bunkhouse if you want. Uh, I couldn't sleep at all the snoring. Well, do what you like, but supper will be ready in a minute. And if you change your mind, I still pay any price for that bird. Ain't likely. Well, Lucifer, we've been dealt pretty good hand. Now we figured out how to play it, huh? Mister, I was around the horn twice before I was 20. Coffee? More coffee? Yes. I busted my nose in Singapore, my ribs in Port Said, and my left leg in Nome. When were you in Singapore? I was there several times. Oh, were you? Yeah, second mate on the Lightning. What was your ship? And. I busted my right leg falling out of bed in my own house. <laughs> uh, speaking of bed, uh, I think I'm going to go up and get me a little sack time. I'll see you fellas tomorrow. Good night, gentlemen. Me too. i got to get a pretty early. I was running down in Kansas at the time. Texas fever wiped me out. First time I took to Roman. Wolfen. Now, the, no, the third time is when I had that medicine show. Honest John's Elixir. Good for anything that ails you. Now I'm bound to hunting and borrowing. Well, how about a touch of this medicine for what ails you? Never said no in my life, but thank you kindly. Yeah. Mm, long time since I had anything that good in my gullet. Mighty soothing, sir. You set a fine table, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you. Can I please be excused? Yes, Jamie. Oh, Jamie. Uh, don't stay up too late now. Bedtime. All right. Fine boy. Your grandson? No. No, he's been living with us since his father died. Mm. Mm. Neighbors to you? No, his father was a traveling man, a rainmaker. He wasn't. Mm -hmm. Well, boy's been fretting about that crow. I'll look to it.
something like a sky full of stars make a man feel alone. You ain't kin to them, are you? You sure don't look like them. You know what I mean? Like the way they act with you, kind of careful like. Now, kin folks, they don't care if they hurt your feelings or rile you or grieve you or what they do. It's like they had a right to it. Your uh, folks die recent. My father. Now, what was his name? Tom Hunter. Hmm. You know, I ran across a Tom Hunter five, six years ago. He was a, a rainmaker. Your father have red hair like you and a spiel to bring tears to a grease brush? Yes. Well, that nice. don't be all. <laughs> so that was your pa. He was a fine man. Did you know him long? Well, I just ran into him that once. It was, uh, we were, his, I, uh, memory's got holes in it. He's gone, huh? You sure favor him, you know that? <laughs> Sorry about Lucifer, boy. Him and me been roaming around together nearly three years. He had a busted wing when I found him. I nursed him. <laughs> I guess he thinks I'm his mama. It is hand of mine grieves me a lot more than I like to let on. I sure ought to rest it. <clears throat> yeah, you think you could fix it up with him for me to stay here till my hand gets better? It'd take more than a few days, three or four at the most. You do that for me, and I'll give you Lucifer for your very own. <sighs> You mean that? I said it, boy. Don't doubt it. Oh, I won't. I'll talk to Mr. Cartwright. First thing in the morning. Now give him a kiss, Lucifer. <laughs> Why don't you tell him to come directly to me? Well, I guess he thought he'd be more likely to say yes if I asked for him. And you want him to stay, so the crow will be here. Well, kind of, but he said he'd give me the crow if he got to stay. You like him, don't you? Yes, sir. He's a conniving old rascal, but I like him, too. <laughs> All right. Go on, tell him he can stay. Although, if I know honest John, he's already heard it. thing gotta do is fix this your place up. If I'm gonna stay, I'm gonna hand me some comforts. You got a bed around here? Uh, yeah, there's one up in the attic. We'll patch you down. And I gotta figure me a way to hang some blankets around there. This place was all drafts last night. Could use me a chair, a lamp or a lantern. You can scrounge them up. Oh, sure. Hello, Lucifer. Is he mine now? Well, you've done what you said you would, so I... Only I think, as long as I'm around here, you might as well stay out here with me. It'd be kind of messy in the house. Oh, sure. Did you really know my father? Said I did, didn't I? Come on, I want to show you some of Lucifer's tricks. Money, Lucifer. <laughs> Come on, Lucifer. <laughs> I'll be darned. <laughs> you know, I'll show you another one here. Let me get my cards out of here. Jamie. Hop Singh was looking for you. I was just showing him some of Lucifer's tricks. Now, you watch this one. These here's fortune cards. I stole them from a gypsy. She had a parrot done for me. I taught Lucifer how. 
All right, Lucifer, take a card. Take a card. Give it to Jamie. Go on, give it to him. Give it to him. <laughs> now read it. Go on, read it. Read it? Yeah. A stranger will change your life. <laughs> hey, by golly, how about that? A stranger will change your life. <laughs> Ain't he great? <laughs> the smartest bird I ever saw. <laughs> Well, I better be going. Thanks, John. Yeah. You, uh, you gave him Lucifer, huh? Mm hmm. Well, I thank you for him. No, I don't mention it. Reckon I'm obliged to you, too. You got any chore and you want done around here, you let me know. I may be a conniving rapscallion, but I give for what I take. The word was rascal. Just so as we understand each other. As I was hoping for that, John. You know, uh, the boy seems to be unhappy about something. Yeah, I could see. He's taken to you. That could be good for him. It could be bad. You putting me on notice? Just so as we understand each other. Well, all you need now is a God bless our happy home sign hung up someplace. I got one I'm making in my embroidery hoop. Stretch that out tight, boy. I don't want my drafts and I like my privacy. <sighs> Jamie, I'd like to talk to you for a minute if I could. I reckon I can fetch that mattress myself. How long's he gonna stay here? Just till his hand gets better. Your pa said he could. I missed y'all riding today. Oh, I was busy. Yeah. How about tomorrow? I don't know, maybe. I'll, uh, I'll see you, Jamie. It's all right. My pa did it, too. I don't know how it is. Sure. Where did you meet him, John? Hey, your pa? Um, well, what is it? I kind of... kind of just remember, uh... Did you ever in Nebraska? Nebraska? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> That's where it was. Nebraska. Uh, right outside, uh, Omaha. They're right outside of Omaha, Nebraska. I was camped for the night, and your pa come along, he seen my outfit, and uh, told me he planned on hitting town the next day. Didn't make sense for a medicine show and a rainmaker to hit town the same day, so we played cards to see who go in first. Yeah, you was asleep in the back of the wagon. Who won? Yeah, your pa. Only time I ever laid eyes on him. I'll tell you, I remember it like it was yesterday. Sometimes I can't remember what he looks like. Oh, well, that's natural, boy. That's natural. Hey, John. Uh, do you feel like riding out with me tomorrow, seeing something? All right. All right. Good. <laughs> Looking all right? Yeah, that's going to be... Get that thing back up. Here it is. How'd you ever find this place? Just riding.
These were my father's. Here's his pocket watch. Here's his picture. That's my mother with him. It's their wedding picture. Why do you keep these things out here? Oh, no special reason. Mm -hmm. House belongs to Cartwrights. That's your place, is yours, huh? Don't you like the Cartwrights? Yeah, I like them a lot. I mean, they're real good to me. Give me everything I ever want or need. You know, the only thing I ever got without their doing was Lucifer. And then Haas had to help me with the cage. Sometimes a man's kind to you. It's a sight harder to take than if he's downright mean. No, it's not that. It's living with them. I do things the way they do, think the way they think. Sometimes I even wake up at nights thinking that they're my family. I never had any other. The point is, they're not my family. And I'm scared that I'm forgetting everything about my pa and the way we live. Sure, boy. There ain't a man alive wouldn't like to live his own life. Now you take me. Living under a roof, people around me all the time. Now that ain't for me. I'm gonna do it because I'm getting old. I can't care for myself proper. And uh, see me dying off in the middle of nowhere. Nobody around to give a hoot. It's an awful way to go, boy. It's the worst. So I'm living civilized. Got my company manners on. It's a strain, I'll tell you. <laughs> What happened to your wagon, John? Hmm. Oh, well, I had me a little too much to drink one night. Time I come around, the sheriff had sold it off from the team, too, to pay for the damages. And I just ain't been able to get enough together since then to buy another. Come here. Where are you going? I want to show you something. Hey, looks like the tide went out. Wasn't this full this morning? Almost. Oh, well, John, huh? Well, you can't accuse a man without evidence. Well, John arrives and the brandy vanishes. I'd say that was evidence enough. What do you suggest? Well, I suggest you tell him to lay off the brandy or go down the road. Well. What do you mean, well? You've put hired hands on that kind of notice before. He's not a hired hand. You're darn right, he ain't. He's a dang conniving old thief that's done cornswoggled himself a free bed and a free meal, and he's a troublemaker, too. Got Hop Singh all riled up from half of the hands. He, he won't let him in the tack room. He tells him it's his private property. Yeah, but he's been able to get through to the boy, which we haven't been able to do for some time. Yeah? Well, I don't know whether that's good or bad. Well, he's been good for the boy so far. Let's see what happens. You dragged me out here to see this? It isn't busted up so bad we couldn't fix it. Used to be a homesteader's, but he moved out. Don't you think we could fix it? What for? So as we can use it. I mean, we could do it right out here and nobody would have to know about it. We could go off in it together. The way you used to. The way I did with my pa. I ain't your father, boy. No. You got no call on me, and I got none on you. That's right. And you got no right to put something like that to me. You get me in trouble all around. I go off with you like as not I'd spend the rest of my days in jail. Sorry I said anything. Well, I don't know why you did, boy. You and me, we got needs. Eating regular and sleeping warm, I don't answer them. Well, I'll tell you one thing. I ain't gonna do nothing till my hand feels better. I ain't promising you nothing. Well, 
finally got my chores done. Let's go. Go where, boy? To the wagon. You said we'd work on it today. And I found some old spokes that I got stored behind the barn that we can fix the wheel with. And I found some old oh. board. Oh. oh, oh, I ain't feeling right. Oh, I got something ailing me. Oh. We'll do it tomorrow, I promise you. All right. Um, can I get you anything? No, I don't need nothing. Just leave me be. You shut up. Mr. Cartwright, I meant to tell you about that. You see, Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Cartwright. Mr. Cartwright, really. He didn't do it. I, I spilled it. Don't lie, Jamie. That's right, Jamie. Don't lie. If you're talking about the brandy, Mr. Cartwright, it was me that spilled it. All over me. I'll talk to you later when you're sober. Well, don't just look at me, boy. I feel poorly. Tell me. Now, why did you do it, John? Why? Well, I got to think about you. What would be the right thing to do? Got me such a thirst, I just couldn't help it. That's no reason. Only reason I got. Think they'd throw me out for a thing like that? I don't know. They wouldn't throw a man out for just one little drink. <sighs> that wasn't just one little drink. Then square it for me with them, Jamie. Listen to me. There may be this and that we don't like about it, but you and me, we got a good thing going here. We'd be fools if we got ourselves shut out. You mean we're not going to do anything about the wagon? I'm trying to get you to see it my way, boy. We're not going anywhere? I didn't say that. I just... I can't even think. I feel so poorly. Mr. Cartwright. What is it, Jamie? I want to pay for the brandy to... How do you propose to do that? Well, I figured next time you went into town for supplies, I could go with you and maybe chore at the livery stable until it was paid off. Don't you think that's John's responsibility? I want to pay for it. Oh, Jamie. I'm proud of you for standing up for a friend and for wanting to take on his responsibility, but... Jamie, don't read more into a man than common sense tells you is there. Will you let me pay for it? Did you understand what I said? Yes, sir. All right.
Come sneaking in on me, scare me half to death. I was just looking for something from my stomach. You get out of my kitchen! You don't give me no orders. Mr. Cartwright, you tell him stay out of my kitchen. Huh? I guess you're gonna send me down the road. You'd have been down that road a long time ago if it hadn't been for Jamie. Well, you think I don't know that? Remember, you put me on notice right at the start. Except I know something you don't. Wasn't for me, you could have lost him. Now, what's that supposed to mean? Well, he's got this notion. He wants me to help him fix up a wagon he found. Go out with him on the road, like his daddy used to. Except I talked him out of it. Why? Because it suited your purpose? You've been using that boy, playing on him ever since you got here. Do you have any feelings for him at all? Of course I do. That's why I'm here. I just wanted something to nail myself together so I could brace up and make an appearance for him. Oh, of course. You weren't looking for an excuse for a drink, were you? You're right. I was. I'm a liar, Mr. Cartwright. That's a sorry fact. I'm a liar. But when you're broke, sick, and old, everybody just turns their back on you. You go hungry and you sleep in ditches. It's so even just a dry corner to lay in is something to dream about. Sure hope you won't throw me out. You certainly haven't acted like somebody who wanted to stay. A moment ago, just say so. No. I'll tell you when. Thank you. Thank you kindly. Why'd you have to do it for? Don't you be having any boy. I had enough, John. Until you ask too much. Expect everybody to act just like you are. Do everything you think's right. A person can't even act like a human being around neither one of you. Can't even take one little drink. Even if his insides is burning up. Ah! <laughs> don't play with the bird, boy. He don't like it. Yes, he does. I said he don't like it. Come here, Lucifer. Come on. Come on over here, Dad. That a baby. He's my bird, John. He ain't. He is so. You gave him to me because I got him fixed up so he could stay here. Well, I ain't staying, so I'm taking him back. I don't care what you do. No. Well, the payroll's almost finished. To bed, Jamie? Yes. Uh, Jamie. Come on over here. Jamie, let me tell you about uh, older people. Come on, get a cup. Oh, you don't want. Mm, no, thank you. Now, sometimes they do foolish things. In fact, sometimes they act more like children than children do without realizing the consequences. And John is old. He's had a very hard life. You know, in some ways, you're more grown up than he is. Hey, how about some milk and cookies, huh? All right. Lucifer! 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 I don't see him. Hey! 
Hey, what happened in here? Oh, that bird flew off with a $20 bill. Where? How do I know where? Where's it at? Where's what? You know what, the money. Where is it? Did he bring it to you? Well, I don't know what you're talking about. Look, John, give me the money and I'll tell him you didn't have anything to do with it, please. Lucifer, <coughs> took some of my money, John. Did you happen to see where he put it? I don't know nothing about no money. Well, uh, you probably dropped it outside somewhere. We'll look for it in the morning. If we find it, of course, we won't have to search for it. See you then. Well, don't look at me like that, boy. I ain't done anything. Why don't you just go? upset so much, boy. It's, it's John turning out like he did. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. And I guess Jamie felt that with Johnny, it was like having his father back because his father was a traveling man. Yeah. Paul, with that much money on him, he'd head straight for town, wouldn't he? What'll you do if you find him? Well, I'll talk to him. Try to talk him into coming back. If I can't do that, I'll at least try to get him to give the crow back to Jamie. Some, anything. Good luck. Hey, John. John? Hey, John. You don't take more than that to wake him up. Hey, he ain't just drunk. He's sick. He's well, burning up. He wasn't when I found him. I better get a doctor. Yeah, just bring him on up to Ponderosa. I'm going to take him out there. All right. Stay still back there, John. You're a pretty sick fella. Where are you taking me, Hoss? To the Ponderosa. You're gonna need some nurse maiden, and the doc says he can't do it by himself. He says you got more booze in your veins than you have blood, and we're gonna ring you out. I ain't going. You ain't got much choice in the matter. A tomcat could push you over. I sold Jamie's crow. Yep. We're going to have to tell him. I lied to him. I told him I knew his paw, and I ain't never even seen him. Uh-huh. I took that money. Yep, you're a pretty disreputable fella, ain't you? Ain't worth the hold of bear, man. I reckon Jamie's pretty sore. Well, he's sort of cut up at that. Ain't going to be easy to face him, Hoss. Sold your crow, boy. Why'd you bring him back? <sighs> Jamie, he's a sick man. I don't care if he dies. Hey, Jamie, it's about time you faced up with some facts, boy. He's the same man he always was. It was you that tried to make him something he wasn't. Now, you can't blame him for, for not being able to live up to it. He's a liar and a thief. He's also a sick man. He's near dead. Well, then why didn't you just leave him where you found him?
John? John? Went to sleep, Jamie. It was real easy. No. He said that was the worst way to die. How do you mean? Alone. Nobody around to give a hoot about it. That's what he was afraid of. And that's why he came here. That's the way he died. Thinking nobody gave a hoot. I don't think so. Read that. He must have wrote it there at the end like a will and testament. I bequeath to my friend, Jamie Hunter, all of my earthly possessions, which ain't much. Including my crow. But I don't understand. I mean, this doesn't mean anything. He didn't have anything. Oh, of course it means something, boy. Don't you see? It means it long toward the end there that, that his mind must have slipped back to the time when he had the crow. And when you and him was friends and, and you cared about him and he knew it. Don't you see? That's, that's all that counts, Jamie, is when he died, he felt like somebody cared about him, that he was his friend. Don't you see? up, girl. Just stay down. Who do you reckon they are? They don't matter. They're on our land. Now you just keep quiet and stay down. I said stay down! I got the kid right in my sights. You better drop that gun.
are you doing here? I'm just riding fence. Ponderosa. Oh, you work for them Cartwrights, eh? That's right. I'm Joe Cartwright. I don't care what you call yourself. The sidewinder can go by a dozen different names. You don't look like a sidewinder, Grandpa. Carrie, claim jumpers are just people, and all people look different. You know, you got a lot of nerve calling me a claim jumper. You're on our property. You're on my claim. I want to know what you're doing here. Well, I just told you we're riding fence. If you don't believe me, go look in the pack mule. All we've got is hammers, nails, and some wire. We ain't got anything to mine with. Carrie, here. Keep your eye on him. I'm going to take a look at that pack animal. Nice old guy, isn't it? Now, don't you try anything. Oh, don't worry, honey. You can put the gun down. We're not going to do anything. I'm not alone, you know. My friend Xander is right behind you. And he's bigger than you. And a head taller. So don't you try nothing. All right, mister. You can get your horses and get out of here. Stay out of here. Tell all your friends to stay out of here, too. Yes, sir. Uh, would, you, would you mind giving me my gun back? I got it in your pack. And you keep it there until you get out of here. Now, get. Thank you. Nice seeing you. Let's get back to the cabin. Time to eat. Lucky pair, those two. Why, they could have gotten themselves killed riding across other people's claims like that. I kind of like the big one, though. It was kind of gentle, know what I mean? I bet that old guy's got a lot of friends, you know? Yeah. Now, if you really want to help, there's a bottle of good Irish whiskey in the corner back there. All right, take it easy. I'll get you some. It's going to take a lot more than good whiskey to get you feeling better. You got a wagon around here? No, just a mule. I'll have to go back to the ranch and pick up a wagon. You ain't taking me off this place. Yeah, when I bring the doctor out here, why don't we let him decide? That's his job, huh? Make that down, you'll feel better. There you go. You two watch him while I'm there. Don't worry, I can handle it. Just keep him comfortable, make sure he doesn't get out of that bed. I'll be back as soon as I can. You think it'll take him long? Uh, yeah, it's a good way to Virginia City. I mean, he sits a horse so well, I thought maybe... Yeah, yeah, he's faster than most. He's, uh, never had any trouble keeping up with me. It was awful nice what you did. Especially after the way Grandpa treated him. Yeah, well, we, uh, both came when we heard the shooting. Uh, 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 uh. Well... It could be a while before Joe gets back. Best we see after your grandpa on shifts. It's a good idea. Yeah, well, you go on and do your chores. I, I can look after him first. No, he's my grandpa. Besides, I can do it just as good as you can. All right. Well, what if there's trouble? Is that make-believe friend of yours a doctor, too? What? Oh, that what's-his-name you tried to trick us with. Don't you say anything about Xander. Oh, come on, Carrie. I mean, that's just a bunch of silly girl stuff, and I'm not taking orders from a girl. That is, if that's what you really are. What do you mean? I mean, you're, you're not like any girl I ever saw. Don't you ever wear a dress? You do what you want. C Carrie, I, I didn't I mean... I don't care what you mean.
Clara? What can I do with Doc Waynes? Well, yes, he rode out about a half hour ago to the Willis place. Uh, Why, what's the matter? Uh, an old man named Sturgis fell down a hill, hurt himself pretty bad. Sturgis? Does he have a granddaughter named McCary? Yeah, you know I met him a couple of weeks ago when they came through town and picked up supplies. Say, while you go to find the doc, I'd best drive out there and, and see if I can lend a hand. Hey, that'd be great. I'll see you out there. Thank you. about by this time. That's right. What? Uh, hello, Mr. and Mrs. Hobbs. Ain't you that boy that works over to the Cartwrights? Uh, Jamie, ma'am. What are you doing here, boy? Uh, it's Mr. Sturgis. He fell. And fella, Uncle Gifford, what are you doing here? We came to see Buford. Did you come to help him? He's hurt bad. As a matter of fact, we, uh, we did come to help, yes. Gifford? Uh, let's take a look at it. I think it'd be best if you two stay right here. Just a couple of busted ribs. I'll mend. All we have. Uh, it's my more serious than that, Buford. <laughs> you always did look on the dark side of things, Gifford. What about Carrie? What about it? Well, who's going to take care of that girl? Well, I always have. You know, Buford, I think maybe we'd better take that girl with us. You're right, Bill. About time that girl had a decent home. Now, you two just hold on. Now, 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 you're bad hurt. Now, since we're her only kin, it's our duty. I always managed to take care of her before. Well, you can now, the way you're busted up. She's coming home with us, and there's an end to it. Grandpa, what is it? Your Aunt Bella thinks it'd maybe be better if you stayed with them till I got on my feet again. Just kind of give him a chance to get his diggings going again. Grandpa, I don't want to go. I want to stay with you, take care of you, always. You all wait outside. I want to talk to Carrie. Now, get. <laughs> now, now, now. Here, here. I know you don't want to go with them, Carrie. And I don't really want you to go with them either, but well, I, I'm sick. Grandpa, you've been sick before. I always took care of you. But I was sick, you took care of me. That's right, but this time it's different. You aren't going to die, are you, Grandpa? Of course not. Well, I said I was going to take you to San Francisco, didn't I? <laughs> to look at the ocean, see the sights. Is that what I told you? Well, I, I never lied to you, have I? Well, I ain't about to begin. You said you was going to take me to Oregon, where all the trees are, and to Washington, where it rains, and, and let it snow on the mountains all year round. Oh, Grandpa, I don't want to leave you. Come now, Carrie. Here. Here now. I know what I said. You know, I want you to stop worrying about me dying. I got too many promises to keep. <laughs> so you just go along with Aunt Vella and Uncle Gifford. But I don't like him, Grandpa. Well, that's no way to talk about family. <laughs> but that's the way you always talk about him, Grandpa. Well, yeah, but uh, well, that's different. I know him better than you do. They're still family, Carrie. Well, you're just going to have to make the best of it. Just for a little while. Isn't that right? Now, give me a kiss. Now, 
Go out there and tell him to come back in. Now get. Cherry, go along with you for now, Bella. Good. Just till I'm on my feet again. Come along, child. Gifford? Gifford, I want a word with you. Be right with you, Bella. Bella? If he gets better, we'll just bring her back, that's all. But I don't think he is going to get better. He looks like he's hurt real bad. the Owens? Well, she didn't exactly go. They just took her. Uh, Mr. Sturgis, this food will be ready in just a minute. All I want is for you to get out of my house and off my land. Is that bread sliced? Yes, ma'am. Mr. Sturgis, please. Mr. Sturgis, you're going to hurt yourself. Oh, what? Oh, oh. Mr. Sturgis, you get right back in that bed. Ain't nobody telling me what to do in my own house. Come on, Mr. Sturgis. What's he doing out of bed? He tried to get him to stay in, but he just wouldn't listen. Hey, oh. Another doctor take care of him. I, I could sure use a sip of that whiskey. What about it, Doc? Okay. Where's Carrie? The aunts came and took her. From what I gather, she didn't want to go with him. What I've seen of the Owens is I don't blame her. Joe? You were right about his ribs. No telling about his insides, though. Well, how bad do you think it is? I think we ought to move him to my office. Let's go make a bed in the wagon. Yes, ma'am. No use talking. I told him like I told you. You ain't stealing my claim. I'm staying right here. Now, look, you can work that claim for the next hundred years, and all you'd ever get out of that thing was beans and bread. How do you know? Look, it is on our property. That mine's been worked out for years. Oh, well, beans and bread may not mean much to you, young fella, but comes a time a man stretches long enough, you, you don't shame it. Come on. Take a sip of this. Make you feel better. Oh. Yeah. You see, beautiful, the doc's got to get you into town so he can take care of your proper life. You know, you want to get better, don't you, so you can work the mine? Yeah. All right. You don't have to worry about it. We'll make out a paper if you want. The paper will say that I'll take care of it for you and protect it so nobody steals it from you. Is that be legal, doc? If it has your signature. Well, all right. Don't you try to pull any fast ones. I can still use that shotgun. Yes, you can. You don't have to worry. I wouldn't try to pull anything over on oh. you. That's it. Here. Let me see that. Mm hmm Very well. There you are. See what you can do if you set your mind to it? Huh? Now... You go see how fast you can uh, get my wood box filled. Aunt Bella. Now, 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 don't you Aunt Bella me. We don't hire hands around here, you know. You eat, you work. Now go on. Go on. Do as I say. Oh, is Grandpa all right? Oh, he's, he's fine, isn't he, Joe? As a matter of fact, Doc took him into town to be able to take better care of him. Gary? Try to get this inside. Oh, here, here, let me help you. You should become the instant gentleman, haven't you? Can I use this kind of 
it's that, you know. <laughs> That's a cute little day she got there. Mr. Cartwright, I can't teach her responsibility. If you two do her work for her. Uh, Jamie was just giving her a little hand with the wood, that's all. Hmm. It's possible that you Cartwrights may not realize it, but uh, this is a hard country and a uh, hard life. And the sooner a woman braces herself to stand up to it, a better wife she'll be. Yes, ma'am. Now, what is it that you want? And Bella, Jamie says they've come to take me to see Grandpa. Can I go? No, you can't. And I'll hear no more about it. Mrs. Owen, she'll only be gone a little while. We'll bring her right back. She's my responsibility, Mr. Cartwright, not yours. Please, Aunt Bella, I'll do whatever you tell me. Just let me go with them. Good day, Mr. Cartwright. <sighs> Carrie, we'll, uh, we'll let you know how your grandfather's making out. I'm sure your aunt will let you go see him real soon. Good day, ma'am. Bye, Carrie. Now, don't forget about the wood. I don't care about your old wood. I want to see my grandpa. Don't you rile me, child. There's ways to handle that temper of yours. I will see him. You can't watch me all the time. You'll see. You can't keep me here. We will just see about that. Let me go. Let me go. Oh, you're hurting me. Good. Good. Then maybe you will just come along quietly, right? Mr. Sturgis. The trip took a lot out of him, but at least he's resting. Anything we can do to help? Not unless you can dissolve 20 years, turn his old bones into young ones. I just meant if there's anything you needed. I... I know what you meant. I'm sorry. He wants to live for that granddaughter of his. Carrie. Yeah. He keeps calling her name. Well... Mrs. Owens wouldn't let her come. The Owenses. They're a hard pair, those two. Uh, we better get going. Doc, let me know if uh, there's any change, will you? Yeah. Bye, Doc. Yeah. Joe, I think I'll just ride on back and talk to Carrie, all right? Yeah. Be sure to get home before dark, yeah? Don't worry, I'll be there. Take it easy. talk to Carrie. Uh, well, what she got to say to you? Nothing. I just wanted to tell her that her grandpa's doing fine. I'll tell her for you. You better get back to your own. Now get, boy. Will you mind if I water my horse? Well, uh, hurry up and then get.
Who's in there? Jamie. Carrie, is that you? Yes. What are you doing in there? After you and Jill left, she locked me in here. Well, I'm going to unlock you. Be careful, Jamie. Carrie, it's padlocked. Where's Joe? He'll know what to do. Uh, I'll think of something. What are you doing out there, boy? Uh, I was just fixing to leave, sir. Be ready, they can see us from the house. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Nobody tell Hop Singh nobody be here to eat his food. Hop Singh no, he just make you a oh, cold come on, Hop Singh. We ain't a horse told you he wouldn't be home for supper. He did? Sure, he did. I heard. So did I. Don't you remember? Hop Singh no time to remember. Too busy cooking food for people who not show. Then I answer. No, 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 what time did you say Jamie left Virginia City? Well, he left before I did. He should have been home a long time ago. No. Maybe the Owens has invited him to supper. Well, I doubt that. They don't seem to be the type of folks to invite anybody to supper. What happened? Well, I got to the Owens. Mrs. Owens got mad at her and locked her in the storage room. I couldn't just leave her there. She all right? Yeah, just a little tired. That's why it took us so long to get here. I mean, if I would have ridden any faster, she would have fallen off the horse. I'm sorry, Mr. Cartwright. Well, that's all right, Jimmy. She's asleep. We'd better get her into bed. Here, I'll do it. No, go back. No, it's all right. It's all right. You don't have to go back. Not as long as I'm around. Me better if I wore a dress. No, I don't think so. Clothes don't make a lady. Jamie thinks it does. Oh, did he say that? Well, not exactly, but he said some other things. Oh, like what? Well, you don't think it's silly because I talked to Xander, do you? Well, that was the uh, the friend you had with you when we met. I oh, know I don't think it's silly. Sometimes we all need a friend like Xander, even if we have to make him up. You can keep a little secret. I had a make-believe friend just like Xander when I was young. You're not so old now. Well, we're all going to be a whole lot older if you two don't hurry up and get down to breakfast. 
Yes, sir. I'll see you downstairs, huh? Now? Well, I thought I'd go over and talk to the officers. I don't think that'd do any good. Uh, somebody's got to do something. We can't live with people that lock her in a corn crib. Well, I have an idea. I've got to go into town. You promise not to do anything till I get back. Sure, I just want to see if she gets a good home, that's all. Well, we'll find one. According to Doc Wayne, it better be soon. Here's a pretty car. How much is this? Now, don't tell me you came in here to buy a dress. Horse or little Joe? <laughs> you see horse in this? <laughs> Not quite his color. <laughs> Clara, tell me something. You find it awfully lonely living in that big house all by yourself. Why, Ben, if I didn't know better, I'd say that sounded like a proposal. <laughs> yeah, I guess it does. Well, it could be an interesting one if you have time to discuss it over lunch. I wouldn't miss it for the world. All right, let's do it then. <laughs> they don't fit too good, do they? And what kind of work is this for a man? Well, I just want to take some files to my grandpa. And Joe said he'd feel better if someone was with me. Well, then why doesn't he go with you? Because flower picking's no work for a man. Come on. I thought I'd find you here. Yeah, well, you just leave her be. You stay out of it if you don't want what I come to give her. Now get on your horse and ride out of here. You're not taking Carrie with you now or any time. Don't you be too sure, Cartwright. The old man, give it to me because she's kin. When the law hears what you've done, they're going to see it my way. Just you wait. I told you to get out of here. Carrie had to go in and see her grandfather today, though. Better wait till Pa gets back. All right, I'll go and tell her. Hey, Pa. You should be home a lot early. Is Carrie asleep? Yeah. Did you make out Mrs. Franklin when she thank you for proposition? She loved it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, she loved that, Carrie. I wanted to go by and see Carrie's grandfather, but the doctor said he's much too sick to see anybody. Well, Gifford Owens paid us a visit today. All right, just to be sure I understand. Gifford came to the ranch. He frightened Jamie, and Jamie ran. Gifford tried to catch him. You stopped that forcibly and ordered Gifford off the ranch. Joseph, I'm sure he deserved it. But I'm afraid you may have played right into his hands. I don't know what you're getting so upset about. There was nothing I couldn't handle. I ran him off, and that's the end of it. It's not going to end there. Now, what's he going to do? <laughs> he can have you arrested for kidnapping no. and for assault. Well, I wasn't going to let him take Carrie. Joseph, much as you hate to admit the fact he owns as her only kin, there's nothing you can do to change that. 
Yeah, it must be somewhere. Well, there is. Of course. Talk to her grandfather, but until then, she's got to go back to the Owenses. this about? Well, Mr. Owens here says Joe's holding a ward of his. We agree not to press charges if you turn the girl loose. If you don't. I'm sorry, Joe. Well, I'll get the girl. You're a lot more sociable now that deputy's around. Only concern that Carrie would be happy. And I don't think she will be with you. She'll get everything she needs as soon as I start working at mine. The most important thing, uh, Mr. Cartwright, is that uh, the girl needs a woman's discipline. If you call locking in a girl in the storeroom, motherly love. She didn't come down to breakfast. The bed hasn't even been slept in. That's a trick. They could have hidden her anyways. Now you do what we come here for. Joe, I'm afraid you'll have to come with me. Clem, you know very well that we didn't hide her anywhere. Man, I have no choice. My hands are tied. Well, what about Carrie? Well, Joseph. What about her? Joseph, go get your things. We'll find Carrie. Go ahead. You just wait for us. I'll be right with you. Maybe she went back to the cabin. We'll try. Be right with you. Hey! Jamie! Have you seen Carrie? No. Well, she's gone. And then Deputy's taking little Joe into town. It's all my fault, Joe being in trouble. No, it ain't your fault. Don't worry about it. I'm not worried. I mean, I just did what I had to. I couldn't just leave her locked up in that storage room, could I? No. You did the right thing. I think so, too. Well, we got to find her, and I, I, I ain't got no idea where to start. Well, I think I know where she is. Why don't you start getting the horses ready, and I'll go get my gear, and I'll join you, huh? I'm not going back. Carrie, Joe's in trouble because of you. He needs your help. Wait a minute, wait a minute, Jamie. Carrie, I, I know how you feel. I, I know you're worried about your grandma and all, and people tugging at you, pulling and pushing and all. I know it's hard for you to understand that somebody needs your help as much as you need theirs. You're just trying to trick me into going back. <sighs> Carrie, I wouldn't. I heard him last night. They said there's nothing anyone can do. That I belong to the Owenses. I don't, I won't. Well, I, I ain't gonna lie to you, Carrie. That may be the way it ends up. But right now, you're the only one that can keep my little brother from going to jail. Joe? That's the truth, Carrie. All because you ran away. All right, I'll go with you. <laughs> Much trouble. 
trouble finding her, did you? Well, does that clear everything up? Mr. Owens? If we get the girl back and they mind their own business, we won't press charges. It's all right if the girl comes by the Ponderosa and picks her things up. We'll come get her. Carrie'd sort of like to see her grand ball while she's here. Wait, that won't be possible, Oz. Poor old man died about an hour ago without regaining consciousness. Carrie's ready to go. How is she? Just sits and stares, doesn't say anything. This makes no sense at all. They want Carrie to stay with them, and yet they mistreat her so badly. I don't think it's Carrie they're interested in. I think it's the mine. The mine? Well, it's worthless. Everybody knows that. Surely they know it. I don't think so. I was talking to Gifford the other day. He said something about his wife looking after Carrie while he worked the mine. Mr. Cartwright, the Owens are here. Have them come in. Would you sit down, please? Just tell Carrie we're here. Well, before we do, I think we ought to talk about Carrie for a minute. You know, she doesn't want to go with me. You know, she's afraid of you. You know, Mr. Cartwright, children don't always know what's best for them. None of your business, anyhow. That's true. Carrie is none of my business. But the mine is. See, it's on Ponderosa property. Well, the old man said it was his. Well, if he said it, he was wrong. You can check it out if you'd like, but it happens to be inside the Ponderosa fence line. That's right. Well, I don't think it's any big problem. We can work the same deal with you that we did with Buford. You work the mine, you get 10%, we keep 90%. 10%? We can't live on that even without the girl. Oh, well, you wanted to take care of her. That's your problem. Well, we could have took care of her, but without the mine. Well, if it's, uh, if it's too much of a burden on you, I suppose we could work something out, find someone to take her in. Yes. Might be able to find someone to adopt her, I don't know. That wouldn't be fair, though. She is your flesh and blood. Uh, yeah, that's right. But uh, if she'd be happier living someplace else, we don't want to stand in her way. We don't get the girl. Uh, we ought to get 15 percent. 10 percent, take it or leave it. We'll take it. Fine. We'll uh, meet you in the lawyer's office tomorrow morning and draw up the papers. What do you think? I tell you, Joseph, you sure are your father's son. <laughs> <laughs> Carrie, guess what? We fixed it so you don't have to go back to the Owens. I don't care. Don't make any difference anymore. Carrie, you should go be away. happy. Don't want to talk to you. Don't want to talk to anyone ever again. It's like that. I just mean you don't have to talk to anybody if you don't want to. I don't. Carrie. There are people who care, even though you don't think so. They want to help you if you'll just let them. It took me a long time to find that out. Well, 
What do you mean? I guess I mean I was kind of like you in the beginning. You had someone? My pa. When he left me, well, there just wasn't anyone worth talking to. Not for a long time. It's just like that. Enough. Clara, we're the ones that ought to be thanking you. You and Carrie just take good care of each other. Carrie? She's <laughs> a great gal. Yeah. Hey, all set to go, huh? Be sure to come back and see us, huh? You really mean it? Oh, you're darn right I do. Then how about next Sunday? Hey, when old Hop Singh knows that he's got guests coming, he always fix something special. I'll be there. Bye, Haas. Bye, doll. Bye, Joe. Goodbye, honey. Psst. She might need the bag, you know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> There you are, young lady. Now you remember what I told you. If you ever need anything. I've got everything I need right here. Bye, Jamie. Yeah, Rudy. Bye, Carrie. 